We are going to cover day three real quick, which is the 23rd of Kythorn, 1477, 22nd, sorry, 22nd of Kythorn. Uh, and the community voted to go to Canary Lane, which the 22nd part is down here. In the midst of the commotion, your, your attention is drawn to a young street urchin who sprints away from the scene of the crime. Whoever it is carries a bloody coin pouch with elven engraving that you recognize from the body of the deceased. Crossroads. Fucking called it. Fucking called it. <laughs> yeah. Crossroads. Following on the heels of the thief, you momentarily lose sight in the dark corridor and bump into a strange man wearing a top hat. With no time to lose, you continue your pursuit and shake off the sight of the animal skeleton decorating the hat. When you emerge on the other side of the covered street, the path diverges and you pause for a moment to scan your surroundings. It doesn't take long before your eyes lock onto a small smear of blood that stains a nearby fence post, revealing the direction of the thief fled. The dark alley. Taking the street to the west, you eventually spot a figure pulling at a sewer grate. When you grab him, he glances up at you, face, face shadowed by a deep hood. Pulling away, he speaks with the voice of a young adolescent. Some of us need to make ends meet, yeah? The street urchin says, his defiance betrayed by a quiver in his voice. But besides, that dead fella didn't need coins no more, did he? Don't you follow me? This here's guilt territory. With that, he disappears down a sewer entrance. Sewer entrance. On the, man cover, on the manhole cover, you notice an etching of a skull on the city's coat of arms. And summarized, that is, this is how the guild marks specific gateway points. Rumor has it, that they make their headquarters somewhere in the undercity below sewer keep. This must lead to tunnels. But you need the thief but you heed the thief's warning. Following into the underground passageway without direction directions or given guidance would be an unwise even with a potion of invisibility. Which we did we got that from the fisherman's wharf yesterday. The missing item. As you trace your steps back from the distraction, you realize the lucky Al Mirage paw that you keep in your pocket is missing. Knowing the Blushing Mermaid is a hotspot for guild activity, you may be able to conduct your investigation there while also finding a way to get your sentimental charm back. Returning to the scene of the crime, you note that the body has been removed and the Flaming Fist soldiers have taken measures to secure the area. One of the guards casts a probing gaze in your direction, assessing your presence. <laughs> Let's look at that picture real quick. It's a lot of blood. I mean, he did have a fucking anchor sticking out of his chest, to be fair. Uh, okay, so the cobblestone. <clears throat> Congealed blood now outlines the stones that surround the fountain. But no other evidence remains of the brutal murder. Really? That's not enough, huh? Uh, the guard eyes you suspiciously as you approach. While, you, while holding a pole axe... Vertically against the cobblestone, he angles the weapon to his side to block your path ahead. On his right hand, you notice a tattoo of a red braid around his wrist, similar to the symbol of the Illmater. Illmater. Uh, I've never heard that before. Is Ill matter? Ill, yeah, something. Uh, okay. That's new to me. Isn't that talked of in... Uh... Baldur's Gate 3, Act 1. Maybe. I can't remember. There's nothing to see here, he says gruffly. Took the body to the Harborside Hospital morgue myself. Move along now. Flaming Fist. <laughs> when you explain your line of work, the gruff guard scoffs, Amateur detective, eh? <laughs> How about your, you investigate ways to make yourself scarce? A laugh from another guard <laughs> emboldens him and he moves into your space to encourage you to move on. As you step back, you take a quick scan for any clues and note that, or note the bloodstains on his boot and the hem of his uniform tunic. Perhaps someone at Ilmater, Ilmater, Ilmater's shrine, we need to figure out how to pronounce that fucking word, shrine of the suffering, I do know where that's at, in Heapside could shred more light on this guard's character. So this is the next day. This is uh, the 23rd of Kythorn. We have made it to the Blushing Mermaid. The tavern is a hub of gossip and illicit business. Yes, it is. You enter the sprawling tavern and it 
known as the Blushing Room, hoping to find more information about the murder suspect. The place has a reputation for criminal activity, but you know the flaming fist generally turned the other cheek to the shady dealings that take place here. Walking past the life-size wooden mermaid, hanging on the entryway, you wander through the maze of dimly lit rooms. Some gossip. When you make your inquiries around the tavern, one particular eager patron yells, tells you, I heard the butcher on Market Street is selling monster meat. He's getting a tiefling supplier with no scruples. His friends hush him, telling tall tales to which he responds, Suit yourselves. It's no matter to me because I only eat vegetables. Reporter, you locate a table in the back and settle into in to observe this evening's dubious clientele, but soon feel a pair of eyes staring back at you. Their owner, a rosy-cheeked gnome, approaches you with a smile and takes a seat. Studying the crowd too, I see. He shouts over the clatter of ale mugs. As a seasoned observer of the humanoid behavior, I can always spot a fellow investigator. He adjusts his hat by way of introduction. <laughs> Zilbar Whistlepocket, reporter at Baldur's Mouse. I'm following up on some leads on this latest grisly murder. This is the third one in three ten days, and so far nothing ties them together. Before this, we had the killing of Insight Park, and then there was the nasty business of the Dragonborn washing up at the at Silver Crescent Beach near Sea Tower. So tell me, what fascinating secrets have you unraveled amidst this motley assembly of tavern folk? You tell him it's still too early in the investigation to share any leads, and he asks you to reach out to him at Boulder's mouth if anything of importance comes up. Could be a big story, if you help me break it. You're sure to gain a fair bit of renown among the detectives in the city. Bartender. You approach the tavern's bartender and inquire about the whereabouts of individuals known to sell stolen goods, but you are dismissed with a hearty laugh. <laughs> sure, I wouldn't know a thing about that. Undeterred, you press the topic and recount how the street urchin stole shamelessly from a corpse. Might these thefts be related to the unsettling string of murders plaguing the lower city? <laughs> oh, that's just little magpie. The bartender replies lightly. Ain't no killer, just wants to join the guild is all. Good for a young to have a hobby, if you ask me. <laughs> Perhaps you can reason with Magpie near Canary Lane and find out more about the guild. As you make your way down the, or sorry, a dimly, or the Canary Lane, a dimly lit covered passageway, summer 23rd Kythor, DR-1477. As you make your way down the lane, a lanky adolescent stumbles past. He glances back over his shoulder to ensure you've seen him, and your eyes fall to the elven engraved coin pouch at his belt the very one carried by the dead bard at Sailor's Crossing. When he disappears into the shadows, you follow the urchin. The young street urchin leads you down the lane, then stops to stand over a sewer cover. That's far enough, yeah? He says with a confidence that belies his age. Seems you caught the eye of the one you're investigating. Wouldn't want to be in your shoes, I'll tell you what. The youth hands over a sealed letter, and with that, he slips down the alleyway. Magic. While while you observe the street urchin, you perceive something was not quite right about the situation. You have a sense of magic being used, but cannot pinpoint what school or an, ex, an exact spell. Okay. All right, so we're going to take a step back. We're going to talk about a, this guy. There's that was a lot. a lot to uncover. Yeah, so we know the guy's name is Magpie, but I want to go ahead and talk about the Boulder's Mouth. If you guys, if you don't know, if you haven't played before and you don't know much about the Lord, Boulder's Mouth is basically the newspaper that covers everything. But we have the Silver Crescent Beach. That was another murder, right? A body washed up here about 10 days ago. What was his name again? Whistle what? <laughs> Whistle Pocket, right? <laughs> His last name's Whistlepocket. Whistlepocket, yeah. 
Uh, are these murders connected? Hmm. And then we have, what are the options? Market Street. You've heard rumors of the butcher selling monster meat. Could something more nefarious be at play? I doubt it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty common. Insight Park. Another murder took place here within the last two, ten days. Perhaps you can find something that ties them together. The city's unhoused are welcome and fed at soup kitchen set up near shrines. We could go there. That's probably going to give us more information on Magpie. I don't know, man. Uh, so we can get more information about Magpie, or we can go the Whistle Pocket route. Let's <laughs> see what we can find out about these murders. But see, the problem is, these murders have been, you know, there for a minute. They've been, yeah, so they've been ransacked. They've been the evidence has been modified and or tampered with because you know, mm. eventually, like especially the beach, like the water comes up. This investigation actually is going by by day so my curiosity is should we go back to the morgue to inspect the body before like i said the body gets uh misplaced because if the guild is let's just say if they it, even so like let's say the guild the because now we have the red fists that are a part of it because the guard was a flaming little fist. flaming fist yeah. was a little suspicious the way he was acting and that his boot it made it sound like the the boot matched um they would likely go to the morgue and get rid of the body because that's what that's what you would do is you would get rid of the evidence as fast as possible yeah but i don't know what evidence we're going to find on the body that we didn't see already but i i kind of like the route of magpie because one i hate his name two um i feel like he would be easier to press crack him under pressure because he's an adolescent yeah he's not fully guild trained right exactly and he may have just only stole the coin purse but he probably knows shit an aspiring guild person would try to learn everything everything possible and be essentially at everyone's feet be like hey i can do this hey what about this hey what about this or simply they the guild masters would the higher ups would talk around him because he's just a lowly kid that no one's going to really care about. Yeah, I, I don't really know <laughs> what good the, the whole Marcus Street thing would be. Like, uh, selling monster meat. I mean, so? <laughs> I mean... It's Faerun. Come on. <laughs> it's Boulder's Gate on top of that. S sometimes you never know what you're fucking eating. You just eat it. Yeah, you don't ask questions. You just eat. I, I'm leaning towards the Shrine of the Suffering. Only because I think we could, if we could find Magpie or someone is connected to him or something, that we could easily press him for information. Shrine of Shrine of the Suffering. Sorry, I, I, it's a good, it's a good lead. I think we follow the kid, and or in hopes of finding the kid, and also the people there are gonna spill their guts anyways for a lick of coin. Yeah, let, let's do that one. I feel like that's our yeah. best lead. I think so too. So we'll vote it. So make sure you like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more of this. And uh, feel free to comment below and uh, give us your thoughts on, on what you think about all that is going on here. And tell us what you voted for. <laughs>